Well, hey folks, Realize Super Trim Redlands, Unpopular Wrestling Opinion, Episode 16. I'm going to talk to you today about the Money in the Bank briefcase concept. It needs to end. It needs to end right now. It needs to end in 2019. Do not have another one of them. And why? Because this thing jumped the shark right after Seth Rollins cashed in successfully. That's the last really, really good cash in. <laughs> um, well, Dean Ambrose's cash in a little, you know, like the next year was actually pretty cool, but led to a lackluster title reign. That's not his fault. That's Creative's fault. But let's let's go back to the very beginning. You have Edge as the first one. Then you had RVD, and <clears throat> RVDs I was less enthused about. Mr. Candy winning it, and then having to lose it to Edge due to possibly having to have shoulder surgery. Um, that didn't end up happening. And then you had uh, Punk's back-to-back -back reigns. And 2008, that didn't lead to a very good title reign. And in 2009, it led to his heel reign. That was pretty cool. And then 2010 is when they started the concept <coughs> of a WWE and a world championship uh, Money in the Bank ladder match. And actually, 2010 was when they created the Money in the Bank pay-per-view, the inaugural one. You had Jack Swagger that won it in, you know, at Mania 26. And then, not even like about a few months later, you're suddenly, I think it was like July, I think that's when the pay per view was, you had <coughs> two more winners. So you had three winners right there in the same year. It watered it down significantly. Now, I like the idea of the Money in the Bank ladder match being at WrestleMania. I sort of get it now with the blow of the roster why you can't do that and why you need to devote a pay per view to it. But the concept is beyond watered down at this point. I mean, 2010, you had Kane. Kane cashed in that night. That was pretty cool. Miz ended up uh, getting a pretty good run with the WWE title out of it. You know, I, I enjoyed Miz's reign. A lot of people necessarily didn't. 2011, you had uh, Alberto Del Rio, and then you had Daniel Bryan. Went for the WWE and World Championship, respectively. <clears throat> um, Bryan had a pretty cool cash in, even though it was... A bit muted, but it did it did lead to, you know, him being super over by Mania 28 because the crowd was like, no, we're, we're not going to boo you. Even though he was still getting boos after a few months after that. The whole point is that the, the Money in the Bank concept was used to launch careers, people that were on the cusp of being a big superstar. And sometimes it worked, sometimes it didn't. Having it back in 2005 and for a number of years and everything was fine, but then you got to 2012. One, Alberto Del Rio's... Uh, Money in the Bank cash in 2011 was awful. Ziggler's cash in after he won the 2012 briefcase right after Mania 29 was cool. <clears throat> but you had like another one in like 2012. You had, yeah, it's like you had Cena. I'm going to face you, CM Punk, and I'm announcing a week early. Great idea there. But, but remember, John Cena's a baby face. It's not like he beat Rey Mysterio. The you know the year before to win the WWE Championship after Mysterio had won um, <coughs> a tournament to become the champion. Good good idea there, really good idea. Creative Cena is a baby face. But anyway, 2013, you had you know Randy Orton. He became uh, you know he be, he became that you know the the contract holder. He had all this stuff going on, everything. <coughs> A whole lot of honest to God nothing. 2014, just it was just a mess. 2014 was, you know, where Rollins won and then cash in a mania. Last really, really good cash in. Because then you had, 25, you had 2015 Money in the Bank. Sheamus. Sheamus was a lousy winner. It's nothing against Sheamus, but they tried and tried again to make him a WWE or world champion. And it just didn't work. His, his world championship run ended up starting off bad. And the whole point is, is... Using the briefcase as the catalyst to launch a big career is not a bad idea. They have failed to do that more often than not. Now, you could say you could offer some blame on the talents, <clears throat> but also some blame on uh, creative. Think about it. A lot of times they would have the briefcase holder, especially in later years, like pretty much from about 2000, 2010, but especially 2011, like 2011, 2012 on, they would have the briefcase holder lose constantly. Like, I think from Ziggler on down, like, you know, and briefcase holders since then, they would have people lose. You know, they would have them lose matches and everything, so when they cashed in, it seemed like a big deal. <laughs> Sometimes that works to add, you know, add some stuff like, is this person really ready? Are they going to become the briefcase? You know, are they going to win? Because think about it, they, what they did with Damien Sandow in 2013. They, that was a chance to create a big superstar, and they failed miserably. 
And like I said, the whole thing was shame. I mean, Rollins' just cashing was great. Ambrose um, winning it and cashing in that night was pretty cool. And then you get to 2017 and this year. <clears throat> now, they finally created a women's Money in the Bank concept. Great idea. 2017 is really where I started to have issues with the money. So the last two years, essentially. I understood it up to that point. But 2017 is really where it got shit. Because you had Corbin win the Money in the Bank briefcase. And whether I felt you know great about Baron Corbin or not, I, fe I felt he would win it. Okay, he could become WWE Champion. They could give him a run with the title and see what happens. <clears throat> and because of... It, you know, issues, backstage issues and that kind of stuff. Or maybe they fe didn't feel he was ready. He lost the briefcase after cashing in horribly. It was a horrible cash-in. Made him look like a doofus. Gender beat him. That right there makes anybody look like a doofus. I don't care if the guy was WWE champion or not. They turned Corbin into absolute shit. He really hasn't meant anything. I mean, even him as Constable Corbin currently is not really setting the world on fire. For all the potential they have with him, I don't. He hasn't held a single title. I don't believe. Um, <clears throat> he didn't hold a title in NXT. He hasn't held a title in the main roster. And it's just it that cash in is going to stick with him. It's going to stick with him like it stuck with Damian Sandow. Like Sandow had to become you know a stunt double and everything and all that to get you know over again, which is a shame because Sandow has something going there. Bad cash-ins can lead to bad, you know, <clears throat> to, you know, bad perception of somebody's career, no matter how hard they try to get past it. I'm not saying it's all on Corbin. If anything, a lot of it's on creative. You can't have people constantly lose, constantly lose after winning that briefcase because then it tarnishes their eventual cash-in. When done right with a few losses, like I said, it could make it where, okay, hey, you know, this person, are they ready to be champion? And then they cash in successfully and then, oh, they are. You didn't have a non-successful cash-in until 2012 with Cena. And then you had Sandow. And then you had Corbin. And, like, that's just... I don't know. It's just... It, that was really ridiculous. And where, however I felt whether Corbin would be ready to be WWE Champion, it made him seem like such a doofus where I'm like, why in the world didn't he... Just what? What was this? What was the reason for that? You should have given it to somebody else instead of giving it to him. It just, it made the, <clears throat> it tarnished the legacy of the briefcase, you know, the idea and everything, the concept, a little more than it, than it already was. And after Seth Rollins pretty much put it at its apex, I mean, that was the apex cash-in. You had Edge as the first, and then you got Seth Rollins, who has the best cash-in ever. And you guys can fight me if you want, but I don't think too many people are going to disagree with me on that. And, yeah, Ambrose's cash like I said, was good. But then you get to the women's. And you had Carmella win it. Now, I know I was not a fan of Carmella being champion at all. I did not think that Carmella was ready to be champion. But <clears throat> if they wanted to go with her and have her be the champion, by the way, it was actually Ellsworth that grabbed the briefcase, which at the time I didn't necessarily mind. I just, I, I found it kind of funny. But looking back on it, it was a pretty stupid idea. So Carmella, you know, first ever female money in the bank, even though technically they've had three ladder matches because Ellsworth got the briefcase handed to her <coughs> and that did that. They had a rematch on SmackDown where Carmella actually got the briefcase herself. Good idea. Even if I understood what they were trying to say, they really should have made it where it's like, oh, the women are doing things and that they don't need the men to help them. And then Carmella did successfully cash in, but she lost so many goddamn times. I forgot she was the briefcase holder, even with the teases she had with cashing in. Un unless her music would hit during a women's title match or after a women's title match, I would forget she's a briefcase holder, and she was losing every goddamn time. They made it work. No, she is not the best wrestler. Is she improved? Yeah, you really can't go anywhere but up when you're near the bottom. <laughs> But they could have made her run as champion, her run as a briefcase holder, mean a whole lot more. It was not a good way to book her. It made the other women that lost the match because of, you know, to her, it made them seem absolutely ridiculous, even though there were some in the match that didn't need it necessarily. It just made everybody seem stupid. And then Carmella won, you know, I mean, she, you know, cashed in successfully and won the title. 
And then had some very fairly mundane matches because her character was fucking torpedoed. <laughs> and no matter how hard she tried, how hard she tried to heal on everybody, how hard she tried to cut promos, how hard she tried to work, it didn't work. Nobody bought into it. I mean, I didn't buy into it. I fucking hated it. I thought it was an absolute atrocity. But it could have worked if they would have booked her better as the holder up to when she cashed in. And I'm not saying she needed to be a world beater. She could have lost matches. But having her lose so many goddamn matches and do all this stuff, how would anybody have any goddamn problem whipping her ass? Um, <clears throat> if the briefcase was put on the line or something like that, or once she became champion, how would anybody have had any problem whipping her ass in 30 seconds when everybody else was beating her to powder? So that right there was a big problem. And Corbin's cash in. So this, that was stuff that pissed me off in 2017. And then he got 2018. Now, this is where I'm really going to get to <clears throat> um, a bit of a rant. You did have Alexa who cashed in, you know, hitting Ronda and hitting Nia and then pinning Nia and stuff like that. I understood that. Even if I didn't like that they went backwards and they had Alexa, you know, lose to Nia at Mania and then they kind of did the roles reversed where now Nia's bullying Alexa and it just it was a mess. And then Alexa's bullying Nia. It was it it was taking creative that was right there before Mania and then putting it right back there a number of months later. <clears throat> Alexa winning it sort of made sense, but she didn't need to win it. She could have been champion anyway. She could have you could have had Nia and Ron you could have had Alexa run down, cause a distraction, this kind of stuff. And Whatever, and then Alexa could have challenged Naya. Naya could have been too beat up, like, but had still still decided to face Alexa <coughs> on Raw, and Alexa could have beat her, and then it would have been fine, and you still could have done that, and you could have given the briefcase to somebody else, and then that looming over who was whoever was the champion, that kind of, whether it was Alexa, whether it was Ronda after after SummerSlam, you still could have done Alexa versus Ronda. I get why they did the story the way they did, and I didn't particularly hate Alexa winning it, but I can see why people had an issue with it. And there were a, there were a few women in that match that could have used it to reinvent their careers or to launch their careers. <clears throat> I still think Ember winning it would have been pretty damn cool. Um, I mean, you, you could have done a whole lot better with that, but... It wasn't as much of a travesty as last year, and nothing against Carmella, but just the way they booked it, um, because Alexa cashed in that night. So she is one of three that have cashed in on the same night. You had Kane in 2010, <clears throat> which was pretty cool, Ambrose in 2016, and Alexa in 2018. But then you get to Braun. Braun, who became Mr. Money in the Bank, Monster in the Bank, and... This could have done a whole lot better. This really should have launched his career and helped, you know, wash the stink of that whole, that whole teaming with a kid at WrestleMania 34. Nothing against the kid. It it just it just was stupid. It made Braun seem goofy. Braun is better as a heel, <clears throat> but <laughs> they had Braun. They they had Braun become you know the briefcase holder. And the Ortiz and that kind of stuff that he was going to cash in, and then he faced Kevin Owens at SummerSlam, uh, you know, twenty, you know, uh, SummerSlam twenty eighteen. So just a few months ago and everything, I kind of lose track of the years. And sorry, it's about one a.m. in the morning. So <clears throat> forgive me for ju being just a little bit off. But Braun, you know, defends his briefcase successfully. He comes out and is going to cash in. You know, says he's going to cash in, and the. Universal title a match between Lesnar and Reigns. Then gets laid out and made to look like a goof. And then they decide to have him <clears throat> hand his briefcase over to Corbin because he's going to face Reigns at Hell in a Cell. And then that ends in a no contest, which just fucking, you know, fucks everything up. It makes it, it makes Braun look stupid because he, you know, gave his briefcase, um, his, his briefcase away for a no contest. So he lost that shot even though he's got another shot at Crown Jewel. And it just, it made the men's briefcase just absolutely ridiculous. So it was basically flip-flopped. They made the women's briefcase essentially meaningless last year with bad booking. This was even worse booking with the men's briefcase. <laughs> Honest to God, at this point, what benefit is there to being the briefcase holder? 
The last two have been unsuccessful for the men. Um, having it be for the women, I would actually just go for it. I would not even have it for the men anymore. Honestly, I wouldn't. I would just have it for the women. Because really with the men, you can have number one contenders matches. You can have a battle royal. You can have a fatal four-way. <clears throat> you can have other matches. Give it to the women. Just let the women be the briefcase holder, be the briefcase, you know, be the, whoever's the recipient. Because every match concept has got to evolve. I'm not the biggest fan of necessarily even the money in bank concept anymore, but if you're going to go forward with it, give it to, just to the women. Because with the men, the last two have particularly put a big stink on it. The, if they want to save it, personally, I would actually drop the whole damn thing is what I would do. <clears throat> but... And I would just come up with something else. Because I just, I can't understand why they're still continuing this after they had done, I mean, besides marketing. The concept is fine, but just the way they've executed it the past couple of years has made it to where, like, okay, you made it completely ridiculous and completely meaningless. And quite frankly, it's a bit disgusting because it's a bad use of talent and everything. And they really need to not use talent like that. <clears throat> um... They need to use talent better, is what they need to do. And the Money in the Bank briefcase is a great way to do that. But without booking them right, all you're doing is just making them seem like idiots. They're just, they're holding a big, expensive piece of, you know, like hardware. Or a big, heavy piece of hardware they can hit people with and cash in. Great. But if they, if they're booked like losers up to that point, if they cash in unsuccessfully... If it's a bad way that they cash in unsuccessfully like Braun or Corbin, then it just makes the briefcase concept seem meaningless. All that build <clears throat> for a popcorn fart. So I want to know, and basically that, that's just pretty much my opinion. I think they should end the concept or, at the very least, stop it for the men, give it to the women. So I want to know what you guys think. Let me know what you guys think they should do with the Money in the Bank briefcase concept. Do you think they should make it, um, it should be its own pay-per-view? Do you think they should put the match back in Mania? Do you think, what do you think they should do? Let me know in the comments. Like, share, subscribe, Twitter handle in the description. So we have Real Honesty with Charmithlin, and I will see you soon.